Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In today's episode, we're going to show you how we relocate a very beneficial native species of wasp called Polistes fuscatus from the mailbox of a local business who had called us for help because they didn't want their employees getting stung while they retrieved the mail every day. So we observed the box until we could identify which wasp it was. Then we opened up the box and we began the relocation process because with native species, you never want to kill them if you can help it. You want to relocate when possible. We captured the foundress first to separate her from the nest. We then retrieved the nest and took it back to our research lab so we could get a good documentary look at what was in the nest for eggs, larvae, stored nectar, and the nest appeared to be very healthy and active. We prepared the nest for relocation and we installed it underneath the eaves of a local barn where we reintroduce the queen to her nest. So we'll begin here on May 30th and we'll take you through the entire process. Enjoy the show. May 30th, 2023. We were called to a local business today to help remove a wasp nest from their mailbox right outside their door. They don't want their people getting stung. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and take care of this for them. From what they describe, it sounds like a Polistes fuscatus or possibly a Polistes metricus. They're saying they're seeing kind of a large brownish wasp, greenish wasp, and that's generally going to be one of our beneficial natives. So we're going to go ahead and get an ID on this wasp, and if it is native, we're going to relocate it. So this wasp did turn out to be a northern paper wasp or Polistes fuscatus. It's a very beneficial native wasp in this area. Very important to the ecosystem here. So we just saw the wasp fly in and fly out while it's foraging. It goes in through this front slot. And we're now going to open up the mailbox. And that's where we're going to find out where this nest is. There's our girl. She's a beautiful Polistes fuscatus. Very much a beneficial native wasp. So we're going to go ahead and relocate her. in this box. Looks like she's got some larvae in there. So here we have the Polistes fuscatus foundress, who's been maintaining this nest so well. We're going to take her now to reintroduce her to the nest, try to relocate her somewhere safe. This is the Polistes fuscatus nest, just taken from the wild. And before we relocate it, we're going to show you some close-up footage to let you know what's inside this nest. May 30th, 2023. Today we're going to inspect this Polistes fuscatus nest that we just removed from the mailbox of a local business. Here you have immature larva. And in this cell you have an egg and some stored nectar, which is basically wasp honey. In this cell, you have another egg. In this cell, you have a relatively immature larva. In the outermost cell, we have an egg. It has not hatched yet. Here's another larva. And some nectar next to it. These are very mature larvae. These guys are probably getting about ready to pupate. Pretty soon they'll start weaving their silk caps. 
Here's some more larva. Here's a tiny little larva. This one's just hatched and it's in there with some wasp honey. In this cell, there's probably an egg, yes, down there. Very tiny little egg that may have hatched into a young larva, a little hard to see it from here. And same in this cell, there's an egg with some stored honey. And same in this cell, you see the egg down on that. And here's another egg. And another immature larva with some honey. And another immature larva in each of these cells. So your oldest ones are here in the middle. So the larva in this nest looks very healthy and very active. You can see their mouths moving. They're producing fluids, which the adult wasp will drink when they're being fed. And there's lots of stored nectar, which is basically wasp honey. And there's lots of different life stages represented in the nest, from fresh eggs to immature larva to kind of adolescent larva to very mature larva that are about to pupate right in the center of the nest, the largest ones. When they do pupate, they'll start weaving silk caps over their cells and they'll go into pupation and they'll emerge as adult wasps after that. So this is a very healthy looking, very viable nest and I'm glad we were able to relocate it. Certainly happy not to destroy it. When you run into a nest that's in a place like this one was at, where it's gonna put people at risk for stings when they reach their hand into the mailbox, it has to be moved. But to move it is simple, there's no reason to kill it. So if we look at this on a microscope ruler, it looks to be just shy of an inch long or so. Now let's go get it relocated. So at this point, we go ahead and glue the nest to a piece of cardboard. We're just using basic super glue here. You can use hot glue or really any glue, but the faster you get this done, the better for the nest and for the foundress queen. So we use super glue because it's pretty quick. Okay, so it looks like that one looks pretty solid. We'll give it a few minutes to dry and then we'll take it out and attach it to the barn. Yeah, that looks pretty solid. The larvae are connected to the nest so they typically won't fall out even if you turn it upside down. And they're set up in there in that way because they're often on vegetation that blows around in the wind. So they're secured inside the nest for that reason. Here's some additional high res footage of the larva in this nest. It's interesting to look at this because you can see them so alive, so active, just standing by like baby birds waiting to be fed by their mother. And when the feeding happens, the mother will bring them protein, which is malixated, chewed up insect meat that she hunts in the wild. And she will bring it back and she'll feed each one of these small bits of that protein. And in exchange, they will feed her a very sweet carbohydrate fluid that they produce in their own bodies and that the adult wasp will drink. So it's a two-way exchange of fluid and protein. They feed each other mouth to mouth. This process is called trophallaxis. There's also nectar stored in the form of wasp honey inside the cells. The adult wasp will store the nectar right in with the developing eggs and larvae because it doesn't harm them. And the adult will use that extra nectar, that extra wasp honey, for her own nutrition. So that nectar is not for 
the larva. That nectar is for the adults on the nest. Any workers that are born will use that for energy as well. Now, as we mentioned earlier, these more mature larvae will soon weave a silk cap over their cells and they will begin pupation. And that's a very interesting process. They have glands in their mouths that produce what they call silk dope, very similar to what a silkworm produces. It's a gel-like substance that instantly hardens into a very strong silk as soon as it hits the air. So here we have our nest. We're going to take this nest and we're going to attach it with two thumbtacks right in here. And then we're going to introduce the foundress and see if she'll take back to the nest. So here's the foundress. She's in her temporary container where we capture her at the mailbox. And now we're going to add her to this container. In the bottom of that container is some honey and a cotton ball soaked in water. So she's got food and water. We're going to put her in there because we're going to tape that up to the eaves of the roof and that should allow her to be reunited with the nest and contained in there for a while so she gets used to the space and doesn't just fly off. And ultimately we'll remove the container with the tape on it and hopefully she'll stay with the nest at that point. We'll see how it goes. transfer her into this. Once she discovers the food and water, there she goes. She should be willing to eat once she finds some of that honey because she'll be hungry and she'll be thirsty. There she goes. All right, let's try to reintroduce her to the nest. Now we'll give her some time to acclimate, get some food and water in her and hopefully take back to the nest here. As soon as she discovers it's hers through the pheromones and so forth that wasps have, she should accept it again. She found the water-soaked cotton ball. And there's honey there too. So hopefully she'll give herself some energy and eventually find the nest again up here. Yeah, she was definitely ready for a drink. It's a hot day today. Yeah, she seems to have found the nest. As you can see here, as soon as she discovered her nest again, she was very methodically going through every single cell on the nest, checking every egg, every larva, doing some trophallaxis with some of the larva, and making sure everything was in one piece. And the nest was in perfect shape. It relocated just fine. There wasn't any damage on it at all. 
and she took right to it immediately. That's always a really important step in the relocation of a nest. And the next important step is whether or not she will continue to forage as usual and bring food back to this location. And that remains to be seen. The reason we keep the foundress enclosed in a container with her nest for a while is that she doesn't have a panic reaction in a new location and just abandon the nest. We want her to bond with the nest again before we let her free. She's fanning the nest. That's a good sign. She still wants to take care of it. And she's getting a drink from the larva, doing the mouth-to-mouth -mouth feeding called trophallaxis. She'll drink some of the fluids she needs that the larva produce, very sweet carbohydrate fluid. And once she gets acclimated at this space, we'll let her go out and hunt, and hopefully she'll bring protein back, maloxated insect meat for the larva, and carry on where she left off in the mailbox. Probably pretty warm inside that container, so we're gonna cut some slits in it just for ventilation, but not big enough for her to escape yet. Because we need her to spend some time in there and get used to the space before we let her come out to forage. So here she's engaging in routine looking grooming behavior and fanning. Here she's doing trophallaxis with one of the larvae. So we captured a few pill bugs because that happens to be all that we see around at the moment. Some wasps will eat pill bugs. Uh, so we'll hope that uh, these will serve as protein for the larva to eat. Here we've added a couple of pill bugs to the temporary habitat. We're going to see if the foundress We'll use these pill bugs as food for the larva because they're going to need protein very soon. So we're hoping that this will suffice for now. Ideally, you would want some type of caterpillar or larval stage insect, which is what these foundresses usually hunt for their larva to eat. But we don't have access to any of those right now but there's plenty of pill bugs around, so we're just hoping these might work. For now, they're kind of stuck in honey, so they might be kind of like a candy pill bug for this wasp. We'll see if she goes for that or not later on. It's been about an hour since we put the pill bugs in, and they probably died in the honey. And she has not been interested in those yet. So as soon as the sun goes down, We'll get her out of here and let her have freedom and we'll see if she stays. Hopefully she will. Hopefully none of these ants will come after them too hard. But they're a natural predator of wasps, that's for sure. About 8.05 p.m. on May 30th, 2023. She still has not touched the pill bugs, but hopefully she's given herself some water and honey, which we have here on the bottom. It's a water soaked cotton ball and just drips of honey on the bottom of the container. So what we're going to do now is just put a crack in the top of this container and give her the ability to leave if she wants to. allow the tape to separate and the back of the glass or the back of the cup will begin to hang away from the roof of the eaves and that will allow her to leave if she wants to and hopefully she'll stay and start foraging. You can see here we put some holes in the container, just slices with a knife to make ventilation in there. And we cut this hole and covered it with tape to be able to put insects in there for her to eat. 
Okay, we've made enough space up here in the back of the cup that she can leave now if she wants to. It's back up in here. Up here you see some space, and that's plenty of space for her to get out if she's in the mood to leave. So hopefully she'll figure that out and she'll take off whenever she wants to. Ideally, we'll see her start foraging and bringing food back for the larva, because they are probably getting to be pretty hungry by now. It's a little hard to see them through the glass at this point, but they're in there. We'll check in with her again in the morning and we'll let you know how it goes. May 31st, 2023. Checking on our Fuscatus relocation. She looks like she's doing fine. Today we're going to remove the container and we're going to hope she sticks around and begins foraging for the nest. Well, she didn't immediately flee, and that's always a good sign. So we'll just let her relax here for a while. Try not to mess with her too much. We'll check on her later. Here we see her starting to get familiar with the area by doing some orientation flights. Wasps do orientation flights like this in order to find landmarks to help them navigate how to get back to their nest. You see her flying all around the side of the barn and back up under the eaves. And that's exactly what we wanted to see. The orientation flights will become more and more frequent until she has the confidence to go and forage and she'll know she can find her way back. Checking on the relocated Fuscatus nest. We saw the foundress making some orientation flights this morning, but we haven't seen her since. Hopefully she's still around. Still quite a bit of larva in here. No evidence of predators yet. So hopefully she'll return. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed our content, please subscribe, like, comment, and share to help support the channel so we can bring you some more information and more good WASP video throughout 2023. Have a good one.